Good morning. It's wild garlic week. It's at its optimum peak and that makes me very excited. Unfortunately, it looks like it's making a lot of people very excited because we have mist and we have wild garlic. Hopefully in the same place. As I was driving along the A27 from my house, we had pockets of mist going right the way through. It's really dense fog. Now ideally, if the little bit of mist that's around me today is up in these woods, it should just give a little bit of softness. 10 days ago, I scouted these woods to see whether or not it was worth coming to shoot some bluebells and how close we were to getting optimum wild garlic. I'm mainly back here because I'm a bit obsessed with wild garlic, but also because last year I got a shot I quite liked. Problem was, I didn't have a lens that was wide enough. So I've come back to see if I can recreate that. A little bit later on, I might show you how I edit. Or if I don't get anything, I won't. And it's this fruity business that I am here to shoot. I know I say a lot, but how lovely. When I edit these videos, I often see things I should have shot. This tree, for example. Fool. I think I just get stuck looking for one particular image, sitting on it for an entire session. So this time, I will not do it. Even though I missed that tree. I know there are other photographers here, but God knows where they are. This is where the loveliness is, and I can hear them. So I'm sure at some stage I'll get in their shot and annoy them. In which case, just, if you ever do see me out on a shoot, do me a favour, tell me to move my butt if I accidentally get in your shot. Thank you. Well, hello, Mist. How lovely to see you. Come on, welcome. Start shooting before it goes. The mist isn't strong, but it's diffusing the light enough so it's quite special. I've just been shooting into the sun, and because it's diffused, I'm actually getting quite a nice effect. I've done an F16, because I have to try and get me obligatory sun star, of course. But I've also done sort of F9s as well. What I haven't done is focus stack, because I don't mind if things fall out slightly in the foreground of focus. If I go lower, I'm going to definitely need to focus stack. Well, what a mistake to make. Yes, I got my sun star, but I focused on the front tree that was so close to me that I ended up with everything else out of focus. Urgh. A little later, that sun rolled into a slightly more aesthetically pleasing place and the mist came back. I found these shots incredibly difficult to process, but you rescued me and I'm going to share why later. Thank you. As with bluebells, I am being very careful not to step on chunks of wild garlic. I think they may be more robust, but that's not okay. So I'm following a distinct path. And if I do need to offshoot, I'm making sure I'm using deer tracks. I do like to get a bit of a path with my wild garlic. Leads the eye in. They're all rather splendid. And remembering my new munch for 2024, look behind you, I spotted this. Now since I'm focus stacking, I need to give myself a reference shot. So I'm just gonna take a picture of my hand. Like that, that's very exciting. Then I will do the same at the end. So I know that the shots in between are what I need to work on and stack. So I have done a four shot focus stack. The number of times I've walked away and I have just done one frame too few to get front to back sharpness if that's what I've wanted. And I'm not gonna do that anymore. So I'm gonna give myself a little mantra. Do the extra shot. It takes a second. It's quite a long mantra, not very catchy. Well, it may not be catchy, but it certainly worked. A four shot focus stack, allowing the back to drop off and capture some of that atmosphere. Boom. There's silence here now and the other photographers have gone, which is quite nice really, because wild garlic to me is a little bit of a meditation. I'm aware that sounds a bit ridiculous, but it is. It's the one time of the year where I can take my time and it's quite a tactile time as well. These beauties are so special. Look at me getting all soppy over a flower. Why I use the term meditation is simply because you listen, you think, you clear your head, and then something peculiar like a hair runs across your path and it just puts you back together again a bit. That's why I do this lark, for a little bit of putting me back together again. Hmm. Right, enough of this malarkey welcome, crack on. Another four shot focus stack featuring some tail end of the bluebells. Up until now, I've had a really nice even light with a little bit of mist coming through every now and then. What I'm now getting is the sun is just highlighting little pockets 
which isn't so helpful. So I've probably got a bit of limited time uh, just because I want to have a little bit of evenness and without blowing out some of those whites in my shots. Now behind me and every now and then you may well see trees that have orange marks on them. And last year I genuinely thought that this place wouldn't have half these trees. But they're still here, but not for much longer. It seems that um, whoever is in charge of managing this land may well be coming and removing an awful lot of these trees. And locally they haven't exactly done it sympathetically. So this may well be the last time that this is such a lovely pristine setting. Boo. Good Lord, look at the thickness here. Golly, I can taste that strongly. Well, there is absolutely no doubt that this is the thickest patch that I've come across. It's whether or not I can make a scene out of it. It's just stunning. Poof. Right, it has become far too contrasty and the mist has well and truly gone. So I reckon it's about time I meandered back home, got myself a coffee and sat myself down in front of the computer to see if there's anything worth uh, working on. It's probably going to take me about an hour to get back to the car. I keep spotting scenes. Good gracious, I think I found the shot of the day for me. Ignore the tree on the left hand side. The path going through, lovely little canopy. And if I move to the left, I've got the separation between the dominant foreground tree and the one behind. So I am upping the ISO so that I can make sure that the leaves in the canopy are still. It's a beautiful little scene, but I think that just might cause issues and be a little bit distracting if they are. So I'm up to ISO 320, F9, 1, 1 25th of a second. Oh, good Lord, I like this. Mm, it's okay. I think it was more exciting in the field than it is on the screen. But think about this with a nice fruity bit of mist. Oh. That was one of those special mornings. I saw two hair woodpecker, one deer, a vole, I think it was a vole, and lots of midges, lots and lots of midges. I genuinely felt that I didn't really do justice to this location on my first visit. I either got stuck on the mist, or I just, well, faffed about and made an idiot of myself. On my return visit one week later, I focused on the areas that I neglected to shoot the first time, and I'm pleased I did. So going back to this shot from the week before, why the heck was it so difficult to edit? Let me take you back to the raw. Whatever my final composition, this shot needed punch and I needed not to lose the mist. So I went straight home, edited it and put it straight on social media in a really poor form. After a video call from one of my gurus advising me carefully that I needed to do something different, I put out a different version. Then I had an idea because it still wasn't right a while ago. I put out a video and you gave me advice on who I should be learning from and as it turns out the answer was in the comments and oh boy did you give me some great recommendations. Thank you. And after watching a recent video by Mark Denny this is what I came up with. It is by no means perfect and I'll probably come back to it again. Thank you so much. So do yourself a favour, watch this but read the comments. There's so many new people to discover.